Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Flash, Season 9, Episode 5. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So we pick up with Ryan's plan, and it seems like her plan is to... Kind of wants to kind of turn the world into an extreme police state where she's basically using like uh, this, this psychic power to boost her telepathy and make it so that she's able to basically kind of create mental sentinels around not even just the city, eventually the world. And so that way, like any criminal steps out of line, once again, minority report, get on top of stuff before. I mean, obviously after the fact, but also before the fact, but it's also like, yeah, you do something, you're going to, like, basically you're going to die, you see one guy, like, stealing a TV, oh, you broke the law, yeah, you're dead, because it's like, yeah, we let, because it's the whole thing of, like, right, this city's so broken, her, she felt like her timeline was so broken, it's like, this world, it continues to be broken, because she's like, the police and the heroes aren't doing enough, you just lock criminals up, and it, I obviously... The team never thought about it, but I'm sure given the opportunity, she would have eventually killed the rogues that she was working with, too. Because, once again, she doesn't believe in reformed villains. So, the moment she had an opportunity, it's like, oh, now I've gotten what I want, I'm going to kill the rest of this team. Like, that would have happened eventually. I guess maybe they thought, like, ah, oh, she's working with us for now, so we're her team, so she wouldn't do that. It's like, I think it's almost like an interesting parallel, because I'm sure, like... Yeah, Team Flash is all about teamwork. She's about temporary teamwork because it's like, yeah, we're allies for now, but that's only until I get what I need and what I want. Obviously, Barry kind of went through that a little bit, but it's like, no, I got to kind of have more faith in this team. I can't just kind of use them and kind of toss them aside type of situation just because like they're villains and stuff like that. I got to have a little more faith in them, and that's obviously a, a factor in this episode. Luckily, because of Cecile, but we find out later on it was a trap, but they end up finding out that Mark's still alive. It's like, well, obviously he's alive because of, for bait reasons. Because I, I was curious, I was like to say, like, why other reason would you need Mark still alive? So, ultimately, the Flash and, and the bad guys end up saving. I love that, like, uh, what is, uh, Allegro was like, yeah, there's no one here, and he's like, and uh, Goldface is like, how'd you do that? You have X-ray vision or something? She's like, yeah. He's like, is that part of that UV light? She's like, can we talk about that? He's like, no, no, cool, cool, cool. I was like, part of me was like, that's so weird. I was like, I guess it's kind of like, cool. We're, we're kind of sticking things out from the outside. And like, you know, let, let, let's enjoy some small talk, I guess. Um, but they were able to rescue Mark, but it turns out it was a trap. But that trap led to us finding out what how Ryan is making all this happening it's because she's got Grodd on her side and I thought that was such an interesting because I don't I remember slightly the last time Barry and Grodd I mean obviously they they uh flash back to it in this episode but I'm like I don't remember the full context of that I do remember like Barry was trying to make him into a hero I, I do remember like him giving Grodd super speed for a little bit I'm trying to remember what season was that. That wasn't last season. Because he was like, no, that he was like, that's it's been three years. So that would have to be season six. I was like, that would have to be like maybe during the whole um black hole situation in season five. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean season six. I would assume it would have to be that. While you're also dealing with like the mirrorverse stuff, so <clears throat> especially considering what Ryan said. It's like, oh, this all started because of you. I was like, wait, are we going? I was like, okay, we're going. Was I wasn't expecting this to be like, a, oh, no, this is connected to Grodd thing. I wasn't expecting that. But the way she made it imply, like, she's like, oh, yeah, because of crisis, like, all the gorillas that were sentient are now just, like, regular gorillas. So Grodd has spent the last three years trying to find anyone but he can't, like, all the people that were once family that he was trying to reunite with are regular gorillas now. So he's just kind of alone in this world as the only sentient gorilla. Ryan promised to help him, like, fix that, mediate that. You know, especially, it's, like, easy being like, hey, the Flash abandoned you because Barry sent him on his way and he never bothered to check in. It's just like, right, I, I did kind of abandon Grodd in, in his mission, you know? I kind of helped him become a hero and just kind of let put him on his way. I didn't kind of... He didn't nurture that seed like he should have, essentially. 
And that's the root of all of this. And now Barry ended up getting the last of his speed zapped by Ryan. They were able to save Mark, but it's like, right, we all fell into this trap. We, we don't even have a speedster on our side right now. Everyone wants to go home to the people they care about. I even love Gofitz being like, yeah, I might start by Iron Heights. Maybe I can uh, make up for uh, apologize to M unit. It's like, well, we don't know if he actually did or not. It'd be nice to know if he did. I, I'd like to think like, on. it's like, oh, we actually, I was trying, I was, you know, I um I sold you out, but baby, I still love you type of thing. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I, I think that'd be interesting, but I I, I don't know. You uh, you'd hope it work out in the end or something. I mean, granted, once again, he did kind of like severely throw her under the bus with all of their their crimes and stuff. But nevertheless. I think it was kind of an interesting parallel, too, where, like, obviously Barry's feeling like, I'm in, like, I mean, you can almost, like, draw a parallel between him, Joe, and Keon right now, because it's like, hey, when they want to rescue Mark, she couldn't really do anything. It's like, right, I couldn't, I can't help, like, Caitlin would be able to do something on the doctor side of things. Um, Frost would have been able to be there to help because she has no power. She doesn't know her her role on the team. And it's kind of interesting because obviously Barry feels like, man, things kind of went haywire. It's like, right. Um, the fact is, Red Death is in sync with her team, once again, for now, because I'm pretty sure, given the opportunity, she was going to kill all of them later. But there's that. But also, Joe's feeling a little, you know, especially when Cecile's like, yeah, I'm probably when I wake up, I'm probably going to be quite hungry. Could you get me, like, some power bars or something? And he was like, yeah, and she was like, "Is something wrong?" He's like, "No, you could tell, like, oh, your pride's kind of hurt because it's like, right, you were a cop, and now you feel like, oh, that's kind of my role now. It's like I'm kind of relegated to just, you know, get like, what, where's my place in all of this?" So, and even telling Barry later on, he's like, "I don't have any lessons left to teach you," but for Barry, it's like, "Yeah, I'm always gonna like need you. You're, you're just as much of this team. Like you've helped foster." so many heroes, but, and, you know, Barry's kind of doubting himself that he's like, man, I believed in Grodd, I believed in this rogue team, I put, but it's like, maybe I was wrong to put my faith in him, but it's like, no, he's like, as a, he made this point about, like, as a hero, like, you've planted, it, the greatest thing, obviously, for him is being a parent, and he was obviously able to foster that, and, you know, that seed of, like, the hero that Barry is and how he's fostered that in so many others. And it's like, all you have to do, you have to have faith and believe that those seeds that you fostered, that they, that they've grown. So he wanted to believe in Grodd. So when they track down Grodd, he talks to Grodd. It's like, yeah, I, I'm, I failed you. But the fact of the matter is, do you really believe you can trust Ryan? You've been inside of her mind. Does she seem like someone that when this is all said and done, now that she's gotten what she wants, that she won't turn on you? Because let's not mince words, Grodd's a supervillain. So it's like, I need your help. So Grodd stops helping Ryan. And that little spark of lightning he uh, still had from Barry, that spark he gives it to Barry. And Barry's got his speed back, so... I do appreciate it's like right um, that when ba when Barry and Ryan uh, duke it out, it is this situation of uh, not only do you have like the the speedster side of things now, you also have the bat side of things now. So throwing all the batter rings and stuff, I was like, actually, that's pretty dope. Being able to see through that at like super speed and stuff. Did I miss something, or did they just not show it? Because, like, the rest, like, we know at least two of our members got taken out of commission the moment uh, the device that they were using to amplify Ryan's tele telepathy, like, got removed. Like, the moment that happened, like, two of the team, there was still that one other guy on the, one or two other people I wonder, did that happen off off screen or did I mean? Well, because Kramer did get away at one point in time. So, I wonder, did my episode just kind of like, because it was a little, uh, my internet was a little spotty at the time. I was, because I was watching it on the app and I'm like, did that kind of glitch or something? Because I feel like there, because there was like one part, it kind of like jumped over just because of like how like crappy my internet was at the time. Either way, uh, part of me was wondering like, because it was mainly during the fight with, um, uh, Ryan, but I'm like wondering, did that just not happen on screen? Because like we did see Kramer manage to get away from Ryan when she was when her powers were being messed, like when she was losing her telepathy. So I wonder, did the other two of the squad just get taken down off screen or whatever? I mean, she is a mimic, so she could have like gotten away from them and um, managed to. I, I don't know. 
To be fair, she was handcuffed. She was, she had meta cuffs on at the time. But man, once again, maybe that was just stuff that was taken care of off screen. But obviously, Barry wasn't alone. Luckily, the the squad rolled up through and helped him. Uh, even Ryan Wilder showed up, the Batwoman of this world, which I thought was an for one, came in, neutralized her speed, and was like, all right, let's bet, let's do this like hand to hand, and it's like, oh, I know every move you're gonna make. Barry just stripped away the armor, and Ryan lays down the final blow, which I love. I think it's interesting that they never bothered answering, like, oh, Ryan was once again, maybe I'm misremembering the number. Ryan was like. Going for like weeks, wasn't she? So that's why I'm wondering. Like, they didn't give it an explanation, but I guess it's just like, right, she was busy. Because I was like, oh, did Red Death do something to her? I like, no, I guess she, it just took her a while to get to Central City. Um, and I guess maybe she was just doing other Batwoman stuff. I was, once again, I was curious, like, were they going to, like, because I was wondering, like, timeline wise, like, is this taking place? Because I'm trying to remember, like, sadly, when the shows got canceled. I'd probably say, like, season 8 was probably, of The Flash was probably paralleling with, like, the previous seasons of all the other shows. So, I was like, maybe this still would have been in the aftermath of everything that went down. Like, what they were setting up at the very, the last shot of uh, Batwoman. Like, maybe what they were setting up there would have been a main through line that she was kind of dealing with. And now she was able to show up to quickly help Team Flash. Cheesiness and all that aside, I still appreciate it. Um, I don't know. I like it when shows do that. Like, oh, it's just another Wednesday. I'm like, I like I like that you write stuff like that. I don't know. It's a stupid thing that, like, I really... I, it's a stupid and cheesy thing I really like that TV shows do. When it's like, oh, yeah, because this show literally airs on Wednesdays. I don't know why. I, just, I like... It's not like this the first show to do it. I always bring it up. I'm like, I always appreciate that. Um, but uh, tangents and all that aside... She also said something else I really liked. I was like, sadly, we never got it on screen. But she was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, Iris, we should hang out sometime. Like, obviously, like, I have, like, a... God, what was it? Just basically, like, we have, like, co have coffee with, like, Kara and Alex every once in a while. I'm like, that's super dope. Well, because obviously, we got a lot of Kate and Kara, obviously, during crisis. And obviously, some off-screen references of, like, her going to Metropolis to see Kara and stuff like that. But, it's, I mean, obviously, they're, like, it's the Bat and Super... The, Essentially, the main bat and super of this universe, so of course they're going to be pretty tight knit. Uh, but I, I, I like knowing that, like, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, Alex was there in the like 2031 with Team Flash and everything in um, the Armageddon timeline during that whole thing. So makes sense. But still, it's just it's just kind of nice to be like, oh yeah, that that's pretty dope. I mean, that obviously that relationship exists, but also it's like, I mean, it's also dope too because I think this is the first. Well, because I'm trying to think, I don't think Ryan's really interacted with, like, the larger Arrowverse. To some this, some some degree she has, and some others, I, I don't, I, I think just because, I think just the way Batwoman was set up to, especially with her, you know, taking up the mantle, I think that kind of, it was like, right, it kind of, the stories were a lot more, like, Gotham. I mean, they all always typically end up being, like, more central, central to, like, uh, where each of the characters are, like obviously, but it's just like I, I feel like Ryan's stories were. I don't. I'm trying to remember. Like definitely in season two, it makes sense. Season three, I don't think she had a lot of interactions with the larger Arrowverse. I mean, who knows? Given more time, like would she have? Come once again, like that in Legends would have at least gotten one more season if like it wasn't for everything that like the shakeups and everything. Um, they would have probably gotten at least one more season. It was kind of like. But regardless, I also love the 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 a way to kind of write around like, oh yeah, Argus doesn't know who you are because um, yeah, like we explained that that Ryan that they uh, locked up was from an alternate timeline. So they, I mean, but they're not stupid. They're gonna be like, well, Ryan Wilder was a villain, and I mean, it's like, well, you can't always take that at face value, but it's still a thing of. Yeah, or I guess will probably keep an eye out on her being like, well, in an alternate timeline, you were, you know, you were Batwoman, so eh, there's a good chance you are in this one, too, so we'll be keeping an eye on you, so I, I doubt that's just going to, like, be completely swept under the rug, but luckily, at the end of the day, everything was resolved. There was also that scene with Keon and um, Mark, 
because Iris was talking to her about like finding her role on the team. It's like, yeah, I don't have any powers, but I'm able to defend myself with a uh, like a pulse rifle. But it's like, oh, should I pick up a weapon? Because Keon doesn't seem like the whole like, oh, I'm ready to kind of go the violence type. But when she like she was trying to help Mark, she kind of was like, oh, are we kind of like fairy telling this a little bit? Like only true loves kiss, you know? Because like the moment she kissed him, but there was like a cold breath, and then he was like. She's like, did it get colder in here? He was like, oh, no, it just uh, got warmer for me. I was like, it's, there's an interesting thing. Oh, God. It's a spoiler for a manga. Um, there were, like, two personalities that kind of become one, and they kind of become, like, like, basically, there's, there's this series where there's a character who has two personalities. It's kind of like, there's an inner, there's the, they're, they're referred to an inner and outer. The outer is like kind of the true personality. The inner, no, the uh, inner is um the true personality. The outer is kind of like the. Or am I inversing this? I can never remember. One of the personalities is essentially like a, a facade, not really real. But by the end of the series, that what is a true personality kind of starts adapting aspects of the other personality. So it's almost like they've kind of melded into one. I'm wondering, is that kind of what Keon is? Like, she is her own person, but she's also kind of blending Caitlyn and Frost. And I'm wondering, like, is that her thing? Can Does she, like, she's in tune with nature and stuff, and I wonder, does that also extend to meta ability? So part of me was wondering, like, does she awaken something in Mark that he just isn't aware of right now? Or... Or is it kind of implying that there is, she might be a new person, but there is a little bit of Frost, there is a little bit of Caitlyn there. I don't know if that's what they're going to, like, suggest or not. I'm just curious. Like, it feels like, because there was like a, there's like a, I, maybe she kind of has the power to kind of spark something in people, too, in, in some capacity. Like, once again, it's just this little scene we get, so we don't know the full context of, like, what that means in the long run. It'll probably be something we explore over these next episodes, maybe. As she eventually, you know, tries to figure out her role on the team. Obviously, Joe had talked to Barry about the whole, yeah, I, I was planning on moving to, uh, away from Central City because of just everything. Because he, you know, he doesn't feel like he really, he isn't as much a part of this team anymore. And he feels like Cecile needs to be. It's like, right, they're going to need your help going forward. So the plan is him and Jenna are going to move to the countryside. But it's like, hey, on the weekends... You come to us and we'll have the time together away from the alarms and all the supervillain stuff. And once again, I'm like, you're in the DC universe. But I guess like you can find those little pocket areas where uh, you're not in smack dab in the middle of all the cities that like get hit like Star City, Gotham or um, Central City or uh, Key City and stuff like that. So like and uh, National City, you're, you're able to avoid a lot of that um those issues, like, by going to more countries, like, maybe you just happen, like I said, find that small pocket where you don't have to worry about, like, supervillains and stuff like that happening on a regular basis, so. It's kind of like having your cake and eating it, too. Because we knew that, because going into this, like, Jesse L. Martin wasn't going to be a big part of this season. The fact is he was even in these episodes as much, that's why I was kind of surprised. So, like, we'll probably get, like, a few pop-ins, like, even less so, probably like in the later parts of the season, just because of that. But I, I, they were like, because he was rather than being a main cast member, he was going to be a guest starring role in this season. So I think that's going to be even more true in these next episodes. So probably won't get that many Joe pop ins in that regard. And so it is kind of you know saying goodbye to Joe in, in many different ways because he, hey, he's leaving Central City, but it's like hey, part of this large family, so. That will never change, despite living somewhere else. Uh, we find, well, I think Mark is obviously going to be a lot more part of the team going forward. Obviously, he's still going to have to deal with his feelings about the whole frost of it all. I'm sure that's probably going to play a big part in the whole interactions between him and Keon. And probably her, as she's figuring out her role on the team, so is he. Finally, the Chester and Allegra situation happened, and it's like, oh, and very, when did this happen? It's like, and Iris is like more like more like why did it take so many? I'm like yes, finally because there's always been this will they won't they and I mean obviously we know in the future it, it worked out but it but there was a complication there but obviously the circumstances for them in this particular time frame is a little different so I don't think we're gonna have the same issue they're not gonna end up the same end result like they did with the whole um, 
situation in uh, um, and during Armageddon in 2031. So we also had Kiom kind of bursting uh, bursting the bubble, and it turns out Iris is pregnant. So she's pregnant with um, Nora right now. So that's dope. And it's like oh kind of unexpected and it's like oh how did you know and Keon's like I don't know I just I just kind of knew so obviously Joe leaving kind of another member of the family on the way it's kind of a nice kind of wrap up to this whole um arc once again it being kind of this five episode arc was kind of interesting like I said it was very much kind of like that crossover thing to some extent I'm also and that's going to be the interesting thing because I wondered about that because I figured the Red Death stuff might not be the entire season so I was curious, like, okay, so what's, what does the rest of the season look like? Because I'm assuming, like, maybe you're going to have, like, a one or two episode. Well, because there's, like, eight episodes left. So maybe, like, maybe every two episodes is going to be a little arc. Or maybe it's, like, oh, two or three episodes that are kind of, like, their own thing. And then, like, the final five being an arc. Or I, I'm curious to see how that ultimately ends up getting divided up. I'm, I'm curious to see what's next. Because there's at least one returning villain that I'm aware of that I think that story I don't even remember where that storyline was I don't want to spoil it but there's like one villain I knew I heard was coming back and I'm like okay so in what capacity once again there was other rumors I had heard about some other I had talked about this once again keeping stuff vague of another character popping up and I'm like how is the context of that going to play out I thought that would have something to do with Ryan being this red death being from a different timeline I thought that would play into it but it didn't so I don't know, especially because, like, this is the final, like, full, fully, fully Arrowverse shows, just because it's like, Gotham Knights doesn't take place in the Arrowverse, neither does Superman and Lois, so it is that situation of, okay, if that's the case, like, they're probably going to end up tying up loose ends for a lot of stuff in the Arrowverse, or at least giving some conclusions in some regards where we weren't going to get conclusions and some so i'm i'm just so curious to see what that kind of looks like probably time restraints budget restraints and stuff like that we were never going to get like the big bombastic like big like oh bring in everyone i mean to some extent we're getting it but not probably like you're probably not going to get any like the main main i mean the fact is we got like javicia returning as ryan it, it's probably like the only one of like the big one, like big characters as in like I don't know how many like main heroes from the other shows we get. It's probably it's what I'm saying. Might be some other characters we can probably like get in. Like maybe you can get another appearance from Alex in the Flash, like we did in Armageddon. I, I don't know if like I doubt. We, once again, I'm just doubting we're getting like a a Supergirl. I don't know if Mia would make an appearance or, or not. Mia Queen as the Green Arrow. Like so that's why I'm like maybe that future stuff might get because like in Armageddon they were like yeah that was still ongoing. That storyline hadn't been resolved. It was still ongoing, even though we weren't getting the spin. Also, we could end up probably like still kind of concluding that storyline off screen. And now it's like okay, and um, that's why I'm, uh, stuff like that is what I'm curious about. Oh, I don't know. That's just me throwing that out. I'm I'm just curious to see um, how the rest of the Flash these next eight episodes how they structure out in this uh, the final episodes of the show. You know. I mean, really, that's me. That's enough rambling on my part. I, I'm really curious to see ultimately where everything ends up taking us going forward. But uh, really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.